Hi, Greenhouse. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the spiritual practice of fasting. It is a practice that can sound scary, but it is a practice for all believers and that we see modeled throughout scripture. It's a way of praying with both. We pray with our, often with our mind and we pray with our lips. This is a way of praying and uh, seeking God with our body too. And, and the most important part about fasting is your heart. What you fast is between you and God, but but what where your heart is, that's that's what's most important. We see Jesus getting on the spiritual leaders of his time saying, "We're not you're you're fasting for people to see. What matters is our hearts. When we're bringing that to God, that's what matters." So fasting is a practice that was a part a regular part of Jewish people's lives during Jesus' day, and many people today and many church traditions still practice that. Uh, there were many reasons people might fast uh, in the Bible. Uh, it could be for direction and discernment, for protection, for guide, for, for asking for the protection and guidance, asking for favor. Um, oftentimes fasting was something that was done in times of distress and mourning. And fasting was done as an act of repentance. And we see that in the book of Jonah. Oftentimes we just hear about Jonah and his whole experience of not listening to God. But the uh, beautiful part of Jonah is uh, that when he does go to Nineveh, and proclaim what God's saying about destroy, he's gonna destroy Nineveh. The people respond and believe him, and even the king um, uh, proclaims that people will fast. And as God sees them fasting and repenting, he, uh, he changes his mind and he doesn't destroy them. So the practice of fasting uh, involves giving things up to focus on God. So it could be giving up normal necessities like, uh, like food. It could be giving up uh, things like uh, comforts and habits like social media, TV. Uh, really, there are many things that, that could fall into those categories. It involves giving up things that we are very attached to. And it involves repenting and waiting on God, using that space that's created and setting these things aside to focus on God. Um, and as we, as we do that, as we deny ourselves, we follow the model of Jesus, we're going to feel that emptiness in that space. And that's the place where we want to turn to Jesus. We want to use that time where we might have been on Facebook or doing uh, uh, whatever, eating a meal, other things, to pursue God and to repent before him. And as we do that, he reveals to us hidden sin and ways that things have begun to control us. And, um, and then we're able to humble ourselves and uh, confess that and receive from God and uh, just receive so much more than we could ask or imagine. And as we lay these things down, they can lead us toward unity because so often the things that are controlling us and causing conflict are things that, uh, that aren't the most important things. Uh, and so uh, I think for me, it fasting at times has felt scary because I have health issues that have really impacted that and my ability to do that. And so I just sort of for many years assumed, well, I'm not enough, I'm not able to do that. And I think that was a lie of the enemy because there are many ways that we can fast and repent and lay down before God. And so I think uh, as I have begun to practice those things and enter into laying, the, laying things down before God, I've seen God use it as a reset in my life as a, a place of growing awareness where things are controlling me, where I've given time to things that I didn't even realize had crept in. Think social media, like when you're just like taking all those little pauses to um, to jump on there. That's, that, those were great, have been great spaces for me to seek God and pray and realize, whoa, there's so many moments in my day where I can do that. It has been a space of hearing from God it's been a space of new practices because there's more time in my life when I set aside things. Uh, it has also been a place where I've seen my own self-care grow because when I am not staying up too late watching TV, for example, then I am getting more rest and I'm able to be more present to my children and to attune better to what God's speaking to me. So our focus this week as we fast and our, our fast is gonna, we're gonna be joining with a, a group called 10 Days, and you can read more of their thoughts on fasting and on their heart for this period of time on 10days.net. Uh, but our focus is gonna be on repenting, 
both personally and, um, and as a nation, that we're repenting and longing for a transformed life in God, that we're praying, we're going to pray for unity and for God to grow that and for him to meet and come and fill this increasing hunger that we're experiencing here at Greenhouse. We're going to long for Jesus together. And we're going to humble ourselves. And scripture says, as we do that, God will lift us up. So I invite you to um, pray this week as we work up to, re as we're waiting for Friday to come, or if you're led to start earlier, what would God have you lay down, lay aside to focus more on him, to listen to him, to give attention and space to him, and, um, and to join us. And we'll be giving out more information about how you can jump in on some Zoom prayer calls, and, uh, and then we'll be celebrating and ending together on Sunday night at Night of Singing.